All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we're doing our match reaction to Jor um, to the Euro game. So this is the final games of match day two, and we'll do a match day three prediction. Match day three predictions will actually be out for you guys um, later tonight. I'm just gonna do this right now because we're gonna um, it's a halftime Ecuador Venezuela. So Georgia Czech Republic. I thought Georgia for me actually played de defensively. I thought defensively were great. Marjo made a masterclass, and let's be real, Czech Republic should have won this game. The amount of chances they missed in this game was crazy. You know. They missed so many chances. Obviously, there was a disallowed goal in the first half is because of a handball. And yeah, I mean, statistically, man, Georgia didn't really offer much besides the penalty. It was a clear handball. And look at the amount of shots. 13 shots, 8 on target. Marshall had a master class. The second half, though, um, Georgia did kind of improve their attack, but not really. You know, Patrick Schick then finally did score the goal there. Great, great, good goal there in the 59th minute. And yeah, for um, Czech Republic, man, they just don't have a lot of finishers in their team. They just don't. You know, a lot of chances got missed and i thought czech republic weren't as good in the second half compared to the first half but for second half man georgia had the chance right there at the end to steal all three points and as a huge miss up from loba Zing on this one so yeah i thought czech republic played well but just not well enough to win and yeah it's just a shame that the handball kind of ruined it because they could have won this game you know and i look at their attack man patrick schick is going to be out for the next game most likely cerny holzik the, the attack for Czech Republic is bad. I think defensively, Czech Republic is actually pretty good, and I think they'll give a game to Turkey, but I'm just worried for their goal-scoring department because they need to win that game against Turkey. Whereas for Georgia, it's going to be really tough because they're going to be playing against Portugal, and even though Portugal have already topped the group with nothing to really play for, it's still difficult to beat Portugal. Kavatskali has to perform. Kavatskali has not been great in these two games. Marsville has been amazing. Makatoi's has been great. And yeah, I just think for George in particular, man, it's great for them to get the first ever point in a European and in international football history in a major competition. So it's incredible for them. And we'll see if Georgia can get a result against Portugal. Moving to the next game we've got here is Turkey. Portugal. Um my quick thoughts on this game was that Portugal were amazing. They were fantastic. Um you know Roberto Martinez did make some lineup adjustments. You know, he started with a 4 2 3 one started Paulinho at the DM. He didn't go at the back three, which was the right decision. And you could see Portugal look a lot more synchronized, look, look a lot more organized. As for Turkey, I have no idea what the starting 11. Why, like, why is Guler being benched? Why is Mulder not playing? You know, these kind of decisions. Now, I did see he, someone in my live chat did tell me that pl these players weren't fully fit. But still, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why Chelik is playing? That Chelik guy was awful. He was getting torn apart defensively. And just Turkey just looks so bad defensively. Defensively were so bad. That first goal, Leo was given way too much space and time to beat his guy. Bernal Silva finds a pass and gets scores a nice goal there. Great, great goal there. The second goal was scored um, by an own goal. Very stupid own goal from the Akadine. And then third goal, man. Great, great assist from Ronaldo to Bruno Fernandes. And showing that Ronaldo is still that guy. He can still provide you those moments. But yeah, for Portugal, as I said, man, it's a good win. But let's be real. Turkey were very, very poor. Turkey hardly did anything um, right in this game off uh, defensively. I think attacking-wise, they actually created some good chances. But defensively, they were shambles. They were shambles. And for Turkey now, it's going to be very interesting because their next game is against Czech Republic. And they pretty much have to basically avoid a defeat. Because if Czech Republic beats them, Czech Republic will get second place. And Turkey will get third. Well, could get third. Depends if Georgia does their job. Because if Georgia... Imagine Georgia beats Portugal, guys, and Turkey loses to Czech Republic. Then that way, <laughs> Turkey is getting grouped. So it'd be crazy, guys. So Turkey, is, it's, they, they have to rely on other teams to do them a favor, which is kind of a problem. But at the same time, if they just beat Czech Republic, then everything is smooth sailing. But yeah, for Portugal, as I said, man, convincing win indeed. I thought Vitinha was excellent in the game. Bruno Fernandes was great. Leal, I thought was poor. Um, Pepe was amazing. Costa was great. Nuna Mendes, I thought, was um, decent as well. And, yeah, I just thought Portugal, for me, were just fantastic in this game. Great, great performance from them. So, it was actually, um, yeah, Rafael Leal to Nuna Mendes. Yeah, Nuna Mendes, actually. Sorry about that. But, yeah, for Portugal, as I said, man, good, solid win. Because, like I said, guys, for Portugal, the test will remain for them in the knockout stage. That's where their big test is. And those high-pressure games. Belgium to Romania nil. Belgium were the much better team. They they finally they finally clicked. They finally got the goals they needed. Romania defensively were pretty solid, but attacking wise didn't really offer much. They did have some good chances though that Romania should have scored. But yeah, I mean great great goal there from Tielemans. Great assist from Lukaku. 
the Lukaku scored a, uh, Lukaku finally scored, but it was caught offside. And then KDB scores it in. So yeah, for Romania, as I said, man, looking at the statistics right here, Romania were really not great in this game. They had some good opportunities right there. This was probably the best chance. Drag was in there. Um, that was probably one of their best chances. And then obviously Burka as well had a big, big miss. Could have drawn the level. Man as well, 68. But yeah, I mean, Romania just didn't really create any great goal scoring opportunities. And Belgium were just simply a superior team. Belgium should have scored more than two goals, honestly. Like, 2-0 isn't it, this should have been like four or five now that's how much better belgium were and looking at this group right now guys look at this group standings one one zero minus two guys this group is crazy imagine all four of the teams and match day three tie imagine we have a scenario where all the teams finish on four points then we could have a situation where it comes down to goal difference man that would be crazy man that would be crazy so like i said guys i'll be doing my match day three predictions and around an hour's time, you guys will see what I think for Match Day 3, and it should be interesting. So, if you guys did enjoy, please remember to like and subscribe, and peace out.